Good afternoon viewers. Welcome to Titsanachi TV. Today, me and my crew are taking you on an epic trip to the magnificent country of Scotland. Well, uh, about religion, um, over two-thirds of uh, the Scottish population is uh, Christian. There are uh, Muslims and Jews and, and, and Hindus too, but uh, uh, yeah, most of them are, are Christian. And uh, the, the Christian church in Scotland is also known as, as the Kirk. Uh, moving, moving on to music, um, Scotland is internationally known for its traditional music. Uh, which has remained vibrant throughout the 20th century when uh, many traditional forms worldwide lost popularity to uh, pop music in spite of immigration and a well-developed connection to music imported from the, the rest of Europe and uh, the United States. Uh, the music of Scotland has kept many of its tr traditional aspects indeed. Uh, it, uh, it has itself influenced many, many forms of music. Uh, moving on to uh, Scottish literature. Scottish literature includes texts written in uh, English, Scottish, Gaelic, Scots, French and Latin. The poet and songwriter Robert Burns wrote in the uh, Scots language, although many of his writing is also in English and in a light Scots dialect which is more accessible to a wider audience. Uh, similarly, um, the writings of Sir Wal Walter Scott and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle were internationally successful during the 19th and early 20th century. There's also, also something known as a uh, Burns Day. Uh, Burns Day, or uh, a Burns Supper, is a celebration of the life and poetry of the poet Robert Burns, author of many Scots poems, as I mentioned before. The suppers are normally held on the near, on, near on the poet's birthday, the 25th January, sometimes also known as Robert Burns Day or Burns Night, although they may in principle be held at any time of the year. Um, yeah, talking about sports, um, sports in... Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Historian, um, it's all interesting, but why are your pants down? Well. Um, Scottish clans um, actually comes from the Gallic word for children, clan, gives a sense of identity and shared descent to the people in Scotland. They are like a community in, in Scotland. And um, to their relations throughout the world, it gives, it gives us meaning, it gives identity, um, our own purpose in Scotland. Um, These clans, they ha had a formal structure, which at the head of the clan, they had a clan chief, Official, officially registered with the court of the Lord of Lyon, King of Arms, which controls the heraldry and the coat of arms of each clan. The coat of arms is like a shield that represents the clans. Each clan has its own tartan patterns. Those are the patterns on our kilts. And I usually they date it back from the 19th century. Each member of the clan may wear their kilts, skirts, or ties or scarves of, or any other sort of clothing made of the appropriate tartan as a badge of membership and as a uniform where appropriate. Clan membership goes through the surname. Every member of the clan had the same surname or they had a few different surnames but they all belong to one clan in Scotland. Uh, it does not pass through a married woman who has taken her husband's surname and then on to her children. Children who take their father's surname, the clan name, are part of their father's clan and not their mother's. However, today it is common for people to claim clan membership through their mother's side of the family. 
anyone who offers allegiance to a particular clan chief is part of his or her clan unless of course they are refused by the chief but today clans have many lists of septs septs are surnames families or clans which historically or currently or for whatever reason the chief chooses are associated with that clan there is an official list of clan septs an addition of what sept clan septs a clan has is left up to the clan chief and all members of the clan Ah, good day, sir. Uh, of course, this famous symbol of um, Scotland is the kilt. Uh, although the kilt is uh, most often worn on formal occasions um, and at the Highland Games and sports events, it also uh, has been adapted as an item of uh, fashionable informal male clothing. Uh, in recent years, uh, returning to its roots and, it, and as an every, everyday garment. Ah, good day again, sir. I'm going to talk about the uh, Highland Games in Scotland. Uh, they are actually events throughout the year in Scotland and uh, other countries as a way of celebrating Scottish and Celtic culture and heritage, especially that of the Scottish Highlands. Uh, certain aspects of the games are, are, are so well known as to have become emblematic uh, of Scotland, such as the bagpipes um, and the kilts, uh, the heavy events, especially while centered on competitions in piping and drumming, dancing and Scottish heavy athletics, the games also include entertainment and exhibits to other aspects of Scottish and Gal Gaelic culture. Yeah. Well, um, the Highland Games consist of several different events, like Caper Toss, that's um, the probably the most famous one. That's where uh, the strongest men of the games come together to lift a tree and they throw it as far as possible. Well, there are also other games like the Stone Putt, the Scottish Hammer Throw, that's where you sling a hammer around and throw it as far as possible. Um, the Weight Throw, there are different weights for women and men, but of course the men um, throw with heavier weights than the women. There is the Weight Over the Bar, where you have to throw the weights as far as possible, but they, you also have to cross over a certain bar. So you also have to throw it in the air as high as possible. Um, and finally there is also the sheaf toss where a bundle of straw uh, weighing around 20 pounds is wrapped in a burlap around the person and then they have to raise it as high as possible. Here comes the measurer. Huh? Pants feet! Mr. Measurer! Why the fuck do you have your pants down? Mind your own business! <laughs>